We'll have a lovely afternoon Kiss the world goodbye And away we'll fly Destination moon We'll travel fast as a light Till we're out of sight The earth will be like a toy balloon Oh, what a thrill you'll get riding on my jet A destination moon Oh, we'll go up, 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 up Straight to the moon, we too High in the starry blue I'll be out of this world with you So away we'll steal in my space mobile A supersonic a honeymoon Leave your cares below, pull the switch, let's go. A destination moon. Hello, YouTube. We are live. My name is John Kulas. I am a 20-year professor of industrial and organizational psychology. I'm a 10-year user of R for statistical applications, and for about the last six or seven years, I've been using R to author things, academic papers, technical reports, presentations. And so this live stream, the idea behind it is to get a little community together of people who are also interested in using R to author. Now, the people that have been invited on the panel to start with, including me, we're not experts in this new platform for authoring called Quarto. And so um, you're kind of seeing the evolution of our skills with that as we go with this, and that's part of the reason for starting now. Um, we actually have, uh, you. the internet is clamoring for him. He's, he's the most popular panelist here on this member, and we have him waiting early in the back. I'm here, so I'm just going to bring him on right away. Vamos a ver, ¿qué es lo que pasa con los alcaldes? ¿Qué es lo que pasa con los alcaldes? ¿Qué es lo que Sí, ¿qué está pasando con los alcaldes? Hey, hello. Diego, how's it going? Good, good to be here again. Um, was it so actually before we get started, was this going to be now so were you able to celebrate Hanukkah? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had a little party in our apartment, and um, yeah, we we lighted the candles and everything. Oh, nice. Was that your first time going through all the rituals and ceremonies of it, or is this, uh, you've been doing that before? No, I've been doing it for years, but I never hosted Hanukkah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, was that but, stressful? No, it wasn't that big of a party anyways. It was just our family and a few friends. Okay, nice. Well, look at this. We actually have another panelist here who showed up, and I'm happy to see him here. Uh, let's bring him on, too. Like my old pappy used to say, there's a pole cat in the hen house. Casey. Hello? Hey. Hello. Am I heard now? Can you guys hear yeah. me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. So last week, we had all kinds of connection issues last week, Casey, and we were trying to solve, we're still working on that PowerPoint issue. But I think this week, I think we're at the point now this week, let me hide this little thing my job here. I think we're at the point this week where we can actually close it out. 
Um, but this whole, these last three weeks have kind of stemmed from the discussion that you and I had probably a month ago, and I'm sure your need is long past, but kind of about maybe seeing if we can get Quarto to bend to, um, you know, some of those PowerPoint formatting restrictions. I think we yeah. got it. Yeah. No, uh, uh, so we had the discussion at work, and they were more than happy to go, like, using an HTML. <laughs> so uh, they're like, this is much about what they really wanted was a dashboard. So they like the fact that we automated the PowerPoint, but now they're like, can we build a dashboard using this? And I'm like, yeah, we can. That's just going to take more time. Yeah. So maybe what they liked were the kind of interactive capabilities on an HTML. I'm guessing. Yeah. They were like looking for something like more Tableau, Tableau, but they really thought uh, automating everything was uh, the whole PowerPoint that they had was so much helpful. Now the thing is um, finding a place to host it so we could just share the link. And it looks like SharePoint works, so I need to try that out. Well, I mean, we can talk about that next week even, too, because hopefully we'll be done with this issue. But, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's fantastic that you got a stakeholder to see the power in something other than PowerPoint, because that that does seem to be a sticking point in terms of doing these slide presentations, is people are so used to that, and they want it, and they want to be able to click and drag objects. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if we, if we'd be able to convince people to move over, to port over to some of these other options, I think that's alternative number one, but, um, the second alternative is doing this kind of fun stuff and trying to make R do things that it's not necessarily pre-programmed to do. So that's, that's good to hear actually. What I was thinking, I think today will be a pretty short session here. Uh, because we're still working to build this live audience. The, the third element here that we have for each of these live streams is, is there as kind of a placeholder? We're hoping that more and more people show up who are interested in this and more and more people will bring their own kind of issues that they might have or things that they're trying to do as they're working with R as an authoring platform. We don't, we just don't have the number of people watching yet for that. To happen it'll happen eventually but so for today i just wanted to recap give a uh and we'll do this every week i think and diego can jump in here too because he, he was here last week uh ian was a visitor last week too and hopefully he shows up again for other visits he's fun he's 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 always entertaining and knowledgeable too so um it'd be good to have him but yeah we'll give a recap of last week and then we're gonna hit that focal issue again in terms of um, some of the quirks that we have specifically with Microsoft products and trying to render to Microsoft uh, products, in this case, a PowerPoint. So I think we'll probably be out of here in a half hour or so today. Um, so let's actually do a recap here, a quick recap of what happened last week. Well, last time our heroes were one up on the mysterious metal munching mechanical mice. For Rocky fed them some chewy caramel and they couldn't open their mouths to bite anything. Always somebody's got to gum up the works. But Boris Badenov, alias the Big Cheese, wasn't too worried. There's always more where they come from. And where did they come from? Apparently from the strange looking craft which was slowly settling to the ground next to the mansion. Poor Winkle, that looks like a spaceship. Yeah, probably calls it is. And as our heroes watched in amazement, the spaceship ship began to unload a cargo of monstrous mechanical mice. You know what this means, Bullwinkle? It means we're going to run out of cheese in a hurry. Okay. And so, you know, with Ian here last week, he had a, he made a very good point. He's, we got, Diego, I don't know if you remember, but we were two weeks into this, and Casey knows the background too. But we got maybe 20, 30 minutes into the session, and, and Ian's like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> So to recap, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get Quarto to give us a slide deck in PowerPoint format that has figures or uh, graphical objects that are located in positions that we want them to be in. So what we were able to get was we were able to get two different figures or graphical objects. Let me turn highlight here 
give me one second. Just had the dog on thing. There we go. I don't know why it went away. Um, but so we were able to actually get two different figures placed side by side. And what we were trying to do is we were just trying to manipulate those side by side images, images a little bit. And so one fairly easy manipulation that works with the revealed JS um, presentation format is to just simply do a size, uh, size swap or a size variation such that one of these containers, in this case, the left-hand container is wider than the right-hand container. Um, and so that capability that works with Reveal.js with the HTML slide format doesn't seem to be operative with the PowerPoint format. Now, the only reason we were playing with this really was because ultimately what we wanted is we want to get a little more sophisticated with our layouts. We want to maybe do a wider figure on top or bottom and then maybe a couple of figures underneath it and play with the dimensions of those figures as well. So what we know for sure is that the uh, revealed JS specification, which here there were two of them that we tried week one, they both work with HTML, also called the revealed JS format, um, but they're not operative with the PowerPoint format. And so I didn't put both of them here. If you're interested in the other format, you can go look at uh, week one or week two, and all of these uh, QMD, all of these source files are, are located in, in the repo that we have linked in the comments as well. Um, but so this column specification here with the first width being more narrow than the second width doesn't result in any sort of um, recognition here with the PowerPoint format. We see two slides. In this case, they're, they're, they're just pictures of kittens. But those pictures of kittens, we're using them as placeholders for our objects, such as figures, graphs, and figures. Um, but these, these kittens, we couldn't make one bigger than the other. So we had two duplicate kittens. And so <clears throat> what we identified here as issues is that that column width command um, doesn't seem to work when we're knitting to a PowerPoint slide. And then we did a little more research and part of the bottleneck for us is probably with Pandoc. And Pandoc is the software that transforms the markdown and markup language that we're writing in, in R, and it um, creates different uh, output formats. It can create a PDF, it can create an HTML. And, it, and again, we're kind of bending it. And, and my understanding of Pandoc is very basic, but it seems like we're bending it beyond its um, initial intended purpose when we're trying to use it to produce commercial, commercially formatted output, things such as Microsoft products. And so it's not that surprising that maybe we're having a little bit of issue in terms of trying to get our PowerPoints to look exactly what we want them to look like. And so last week, um, we, we kind of uh, brainstormed a few different ideas in terms of weight workarounds for this. And again, one of the points of this live stream is to collectively uh, problem solve workarounds when we don't have uh, a built-in capability in terms of the platform, what we enter as input and what we want as output. And so what we worked with last week, and we thought kind of going in, we were a little skeptical about this as a solution. But we did try just kind of cramming multiple objects within those containers. Um, and I think, Diego, I think you'll agree that, that we came to the consensus that that's not a viable option, right? That's just not going to work. Uh, there's two other options um, that we didn't try last week. Again, all kinds of technical issues last week uh, with internet issues and, and, and uh, other things going on. Um, but we didn't have time to actually try some of these other options. One of the other options that I think is going to be effective, and I think we'll focus uh, today on it, is to use one of those ggplot kind of um, additions. So one of those ggplot kind of centric pack 
packages that are intended for end users to be more flexible with how they use uh, how they use ggplot in order to get them in this particular purpose in order to get them formatted and, and sized and located relative to each other how you want them to be uh, located. And so here I haven't listed a comprehensive list, but I just kind of came up with some that I know all of us are familiar with. So Grid Extra, I think Diego and Casey, when we work on our projects, that's probably the one that we go to most commonly for arranging ggplot, what are called grobs, graphical objects, uh, for, for arranging those, those grobs wherever we want to uh, put them. Um, but it's it's not only Grid Extra that does this. There's all kinds, like everything else with R, there's all kinds of options. There's a package called ggpubr, which is uh, focused on publishing uh, ggplot images, but they have a lot of uh, features in there as well to do things like manipulate formats. Cowplot, I know we've all used Cowplot. Lattice, I didn't put in here, we probably could have used. And then even in base R, there's that uh, par mf row that, that you know, it's one of those early commands you use when you're first learning R in terms of placement of plots together. So all of these I consider to be kind of same flavor of solution when we're trying to have control over where the plots go on an image. So I don't think unless someone has interest that watches and see that today and leaves a comment or maybe leaves uh, or says something in the chat rather, I guess that's the proper terminology. Or if they watch this later and leave a comment, if someone wants to see how we might control the location of things by um, specifying a template, we could do that. But I, I, I think we'll probably be okay doing what we want to do by just playing with some of these packages. Grid Extra, ggpubr, or Cowplot, I think are the three main ones that I looked into. Um, so I was able fairly easily, and, and this isn't a surprise because we know we can do this with the reveal JS. Uh, I haven't tried it yet with, with PowerPoint, and that, that'll be kind of a mystery of today, I think. But I was able to quite easily control the container size of just two different, in this case, plots, not images. And I sold, I just grabbed the script for these plots from someone someone else. This, this is the MT car package, and, and these are car statistics. Um, but this is one graph here, a histogram on the left, and then there's a, a little what looks like a scatter plot, uh, or maybe a histogram with dots instead of bars on the right. But those are those are two different plots. Now, easily, fairly easily, we were able to specify dimensions of this such that the left-hand plot was twice the size of the right-hand plot, and then again, not necessary. We could do it within the same package, but just to test out a different package, I, I did what we want to do in terms of our aspiration. If we look at the previous slide, um, if our aspiration is one big figure on top, figure on the bottom on the left, figure on the bottom on the right, then we can do that as well through the grid extra package actually fairly easily. And so these are the two previous plots on the previous slide and we just place them on the bottom and then we put a larger, wider plot up on top. So what I was thinking today, Diego and Casey, was um, maybe we actually try to get a PowerPoint slide deck, a very small one, so maybe just two slides that has um, sorry, I lost I lost my HTML file, that has um, formatting similar to this. Now, it doesn't need to be exactly this, but something like this, something that we can control. So a wide plot on top, and then maybe two smaller plots on the bottom. So what I was thinking, it's, it's great that three of us are here. So I wonder if maybe what we could do is each of us could develop a plot. So just use whatever shared package you want. It could be Palmer Penguins, it could be MT Cars, it could be the Iris data set, but either go and find a script that creates a plot or 
script it yourself, create your own plot. Um, and then we'll share the, the scripting in the chat or in the private chat, ideally in the public chat, if we get to it. I don't even know if I can get to it here. It looks like I can. Um, so then we can share it in the chat and then we can put it together. I can put it together on my end, see if it works as a reveal JS. And then I can pass it to one of you and you can see if it works as a PowerPoint. What do you guys think? Sounds pretty good. Sounds good. Okay. Well, if you two on your end want to um, see if you can find a script that creates a plot that you want. Now, the one thing I guess I'll say, especially with Casey here, because Casey does really fancy interactive plots. I know Casey's going to want to go immediately to Plotly and have an interactive element. I think one of the things that we're not going to be able to solve. So one of the, you know, one of the um, authoring solutions that that would be very, very, very tricky. That uh, if anyone ever brings up, is how to retain interactive elements within something like a PowerPoint slide deck. So. Um, that's, uh, that's, you know, pro level advanced level stuff. I think for us, um, we want to stick with static graphs. So when you guys go out there and look for, um, graphical representations of data, just do it as a static, maybe ggplot or base plot. Let's not do any interactive stuff. And so while you guys look, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to actually, I'm going to look for, and I'll keep this open for anyone watching i'm just gonna do a palmer penguin graph and i'm just gonna steal steal it and we'll look for a pretty image here oh there's plenty of pretty images you know these things are getting more and more complex when you do a basic search it used to be they had fairly simple ones and now they're all kind of, they're all pretty, but they're all a little cluttered. Um, I'm going to stay away from faceted plots like this one, just because we're going to be essentially faceting ourselves anyway. There's a plotly object you can tell from the hover. Um, I guess we'll just grab a scatter plot, a basic scatter plot. And I think there's a Palmer Penguins. Um, host page, I could probably just go there and grab it. Allison Horst, I know what's involved or is involved, or at least is very interested in, in this stuff. So um, she probably has quite a few different scraps of code here. Um, wow. That's, that's a long, long graph. We don't need anything. I'm going to get the body mass one that's like stack histograms. That one, go down there. I'm trying oh. to get a correlation plot right now. All right. I might just do iron. <laughs> Hopefully, there's nothing incredibly embarrassing on my search uh, when I look for it. I oh my so gosh, cool. I saw this up. I know, right? Python. Yeah, Py we could use Python code, actually. Yeah, we could create a chunk in Quarto. If you want to do that, Diego, I'm leaving that up to you. You guys are the Python people. Python people. Sounds like a new super villain, right? Could be one of Spider Man's people. Or a group of them, I guess. Python people. Where are all the nice graphs? Nice graphs. There are none. Well, I know we've done them before. I can just grab one of our old codes as well. This is fun. Mm. Okay, I created mine. I'm struggling to create mine. Okay. Well, you got a little time here. I'm gonna create. All you guys need to do is do a little scripting. I'm gonna create an empty Quarto document here, Quarto presentation. So I'll go file, 
new file court or presentation and then we'll call it trying figure formatting author is three cool guys um and i'm going to do this in reveal first because this we know is the most uh, flexible and amenable to what we want to do and then like i said if this works i'll go ahead and push it um and then diego you could or casey whoever wants to can pull it and see if you can render it as a powerpoint i do not like m cars what do you call the first column to bring it up For the data, shouldn't it just be data empty cars? No, no. I meant the first column in the data set, you know, where it comes to names of the vehicles. It doesn't have a name. Oh, that's weird. Is it MPG? Oh, no, it's not even a column. I need to pull it out and make it its own column. That's that's annoying. That's annoying. All right. Let me see if I can find something really quickly. Okay. Um, All right, I'm copying and pasting. Give me a second. So if you guys find something that works, go ahead and just put it in the um, put it in All the right. chat. That'll make it look like somebody's actually interacting with us anyway. So that's good. I'm gonna blow up my editor here so it's a little hopefully easier to see. Whoa, easier for you. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's not do that. <sighs> Hopefully that's better. I'm gonna, it's every time I, every time I do something like this, um, what do we call it? I didn't call it anything yet. Even with the default files, every time I bring one up, I always, I don't know if this is neuroticism or what, but I always feel like I have to um, render it first just to make sure it renders. I guess that's probably a good idea, just in case you, you know, you don't have most recently updated software or something. It looks like it works. Um, let's just leave two slides in here, and we'll say trying one, trying two. I'm going to put my chunk in here. Um, see if that works just by itself. Are you guys using ggplot, I'm guessing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, pretty graph. I'm going to go ahead and um, assign these to objects. So let's call this. You guys aren't using iris, right? I guess I can just call it iris. No, I'm not. And then, ooh, it's in the private chat, I see. Holy cow. Diego, you got a big one. Oh, this is the private chat? Oops. No, that's okay. Yeah, if you want to put it in the actual chat, go ahead and do that, please. If you guys know how to do that. I'm not even sure how to do that. Is it not comments? Or do we have to go to your YouTube channel? I think we got to go no, to the it, actual YouTube, don't we? No, no, no. I think you can do it in comments. Somebody just did it. So, Diego Figgy? You, you, you have to log in. I logged in with my email. That's my, that's my personal email. You're just outed now. Your 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 previous YouTube anonymity is now forever gone, <laughs> completely gone. Um, so you broke it up, Diego. Is that right? I think you had that looks like one chunk of code, but you broke it up into two chats. Uh oh. It, no, the it did it's it automatically for me. <laughs> oh, look at yours. Yours is pretty with the. Uh, you must have done the Palmer penguins. So we got cars and we got penguins. Well, Casey's here, but we got to give him. I haven't used Mike's intro yet. 
So, Casey, you're about to come back in. This isn't your intro. I, we're still working on your intro, Casey. So I gotta find like a good Fox one. But I got an old one for Mike. We gotta we gotta find some way to incentivize Mike to show up. But this this is actually his intro. too much fun with that stuff. You would not believe how much time I've been spending on these stupid little drops. It's funny that mine is a goat because in Spanish, goat, we say it cabra. Yeah. And you know, you know, the King Charlemagne, uh, you know, the, the Charlemagne. Yeah. Heard of we, him. We, we sometimes call it cabro magno. <laughs> That's the biggest king, cabro magno. Yeah, instead of Charlemagne. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I told you, I think, last week that you, the avatar that I found for you is actually a Pyrenees Ibex, which is now extinct, but it's recently extinct, and it's, like, incredibly sad. So, I don't know. I feel like we have to honor the Pyrenees Ibex. We have to stick with the goat theme, but we have to find. It's got huge horns. It's got. <laughs> I sound like the wizard in uh, Monty Python, but it's got these huge, massive horns. It's kind of like a regal-looking thing. So, um, all right, let's. So let's see if we can just. Maybe we'll do a few different slides. We'll do one with. Um, we'll do one chunk here that has all three. It has all three uh, figures specified, but we'll just ask for one of the figures on this first chunk. I don't know if the default in Quarto is to echo um, this code. Hopefully not. If so, we'll have to get rid of that. And then Casey, I think you showed me this little trick. I, for the longest time, I've been doing three ticks, curly bracket R, three ticks. Not like it's a, you know, this is a, first world problem i guess not like it's a huge deal i'm gonna get carpal tunnel or something but um but i love that little plus code chunk what i like better is mike found in the visual editor or he's the one that mentioned it you know doing your forward slash and then getting all of those options i just hate the visual editor so much i can't use it i gotta get used to that i think I'm pretty sure there's a shortcut where you could just hit something in the keys to get the chunk to come up. Yeah, I just there's forget a control, what it is. It's a control something shortcut. Yeah. Yeah. Five people here. If someone in the chat knows, let us know, please. <laughs> Diego, I'm surprised you don't know that one. You know all kinds of shortcuts. Yeah, I haven't been using the visual editor much. No, not in visual editor, but just in R in general. There's like a shortcut, like a control command to get a chunk to pop up. Uh-oh, got an error. Hmm. That's funny. It ran each of these separately. Oh, no, it doesn't like mine. Of course, it's going to be mine. Hmm. Maybe you overran Iris, the data set, because your object is called the same thing as the data set. Oh. Good point. Oh, you know what? I'm probably gonna have to read that in. Let me. Wow. Oh, that's a mess. Good point, Diego. I guess that's a good lesson. Got to be more careful about that. I was being kind of cavalier without spending a lot of time into the object name. Just called it what the data set was, which is actually stupid. So good, 
I shouldn't say stupid. Wasn't a smart move. <laughs> That's why a panel is so good. It, it, you know, instead of kicking yourself for, <laughs> it's funny when you first learn R. I don't know if you guys experienced this, but you have so many times where, um, where you're so convinced that R is wrong. Right? You're like, no, this is this makes sense. This is right. R is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, first, yeah. When I first started teaching this stuff, we had a uh, we had a saying that we started to use, which is R is never wrong. <laughs> and it's not. Oh, I'm gonna get it again. Okay. Diego, I think you're probably right. So let's try it. Well, maybe not. Doesn't like the cars, apparently. So let's do. I'm cheating a little bit. We're using the old markdown uh, syntax. You know what? Let's not do that. Let's try to use the quark, though. Was it hash pipe? Is that what that is? You guys remember? I think it's hash pipe. I think it is hashtag pipe. And then they use lowercase, don't they? Yeah, they do use lowercase. You are correct. Yeah. They gotta switch everything up. So we'll see if we can bypass the cars issue and see if that's our problem. Okay, so it looks like it's in. The, we'll check out the. Oh, you know what? Might be the same thing. Again. Oh no, it's empty cars. So we might be okay. Um. Let's take a look at that cars object. Let's see if it works. Doesn't like it. minimize this and see if we can you guys don't see like an extra parenthesis or anything here do you mm -hmm. it's two lines of code what is the error <laughs> 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 it literally worked on my end yeah I mean that's R It might be just simple uh, spacing issues. It shows up in your data set. Yeah, but it's showing up as actually empty when we mm. plot it, which is. Shape, we're not doing shape. All right, let's see, what do we have? We have, let's take a look at that data object. So we have HP on X, MPG, HP, PG, nothing looks wrong with that. Must look okay. Yeah, that's a little bizarre. I'm not sure. Well, we weren't trying to problem solve R, but I guess we probably should try to figure out what's going on here. I 
it's still giving us a shape aesthetic issue, which is odd. Okay, so all I did was specify size on that geom point, which shouldn't make a difference. But we'll go ahead and try that again. We'll leave the eval. Oh, look at that. It made another hash pipe there. I didn't put that there. Yeah, it does it automatically. Man, it just auto compete stuff complete stuff. That's gonna that's gonna be something to get used to as well. There's the uh, pretty boring looking no colors iris data set. Pretty boring looking no colors cars data set. And Diego's got to shame all of us. Yeah. Nice legend. Colors. Not only colors, but kind of, I guess those are more Easter colors than Christmas colors, right? I still... oh, right. We should change the colors for red. <laughs> White and, and <laughs> red, green. white, and blue. Mm -hmm. We can do uh, oh, what's in the those are usually the only Christmas colors, right? Gold, maybe. All right, so now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get all three of those in the same plotting space, uh, and we're going to. Oh, yuck. Oh, it doesn't look like, that looks like someone had too much eggnog on Christmas Eve and that's Christmas morning. <laughs> that's, that's not, like, Diego, I'm going back to your old colors. Your old colors were a lot better. <laughs> that was a good thought, but it's just hideous. It's, it's just the shape, not the colors. It's the shape that looks like vomit, not the colors. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the other thing I'm going to do so I don't have to keep opening this is we'll just take a look at it in the preview thing. Um, Casey, I don't know. I don't think you were here last week when we talked about it, but one of the things that we found that's really useful as we start to do more of these quarto presentations is a YAML command, um, which is this most wheel equals true. It's really annoying to navigate these files, having to use, again, another first world problem. But it's kind of annoying having to navigate these without, using, I'm sitting here like twisting my mouse, trying to get it to work and it's not, mm -hmm. it's not working. But they actually do have a YAML command that enables that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before I ship it to you guys. Whoa. We'll see if that worked. It's funny, the YAML in these Quarto documents seems to be just as testy as the uh, Markdown YAML was with things like spaces and indents. OK, so we got our three in there. Um, we'll go all together, and if this works, hopefully we can, can get out of here. You know, I said we'd be out of here in like 20 minutes. Um, when I was a professor, too, I, like the worst thing I could say walking into class was, oh, I think we'll get out of here early. But I think it ends up time, being 10 extra minutes in class. <laughs> like almost every time. Like, I don't even know how that works. And you guys are both teaching too, so you probably have. Do you have that same experience? Do you ever say that? I shouldn't probably just you shouldn't even say it. No, I don't jinx myself, and then I end up finishing early. Uh, I think that's what it is. You always just jinxed it. Did you believe in jinxes? Not really, but then there are times where you're like, yeah, if you didn't say it, it probably wouldn't have happened. He's agnostic about jinxes. Right. Like Quarto is agnostic about languages. Um, Quarto just wants to be everything. It wants to be the platform, you know? It does. I hope they make it. I hope it is. 
I mean, you know, we're going to struggle. I'm, I'm going to struggle, I think, trying to learn it, a trying to transition smoothly. <laughs> um, but I think I got a good hang of it, especially when uh, building CSS. Like, I learned how to do more CSS now while building the reveal JS. Have so you, I think that's what I like more about Quarto. Casey, have you tried that sassy CSS yet? Yeah, no, that's exactly how I build it. The super okay. CSS, yep. Okay, maybe we should connect on that because I need a good resource on that. I haven't found one. I'm trying to learn it. Okay. Um, do you find it a lot different than CSS? It's no, just like... uh, it, it, it's similar, just like little changes here and there. Yeah. I'll definitely uh, send you the YouTube link. I just need to find it again. Um, cool. Thanks. So I'm gonna put. I'm just gonna temporarily put our objects down here. Our wrapping objects that we have. I have a placeholder script here with P2, P1, um, and P3 that were my previous wrapping objects that we used in the slide deck present what we're going to be doing here today. Um, and so the get this down so we can see it. The, uh, the reason I like grid extra is it's somewhat intuitive in terms of, I don't know if I like it or don't like it, but it takes the objects themselves and it says, I don't care what you called them, but this is this is the first thing <laughs> that you specified. This is the second thing that you specified. And in this case, this is the third thing that you specified. So um, I say, let's put this on its own row. Oh, and so by the way, this layout matrix, this is, uh, in this particular case, I have uh, row one, row two, and then three one is column one and three two is actually gonna be column two. And it's just saying where we place these. The syntax, the syntactic structure for the different, for the other packages that we mentioned are a little bit different than this, but it's probably not intuitive, but we used it for so long that I think I'm kind of used to it. So I think let's just lay out this top one on top. So I'm going to make the top one our third object that we call up here. And that's that mass hist. And then we'll just put the other two below it, and that'll be one. So one will be cars, two will be our iris data set. And then I'll get rid of these. And then we cross our fingers and see if this actually works. Let me see if I have a celebrant furry, if we actually, if it makes it. I got a little celebratory, we can try it. We won't try it quite yet. We'll try it if it works with the PowerPoint. Hey, there we go. And we could get fan yeah, we could get fancier, you know, if we wanted to. But I think for now, um, that's probably enough for me to push this. And then either Diego or Casey, you guys want to take it and just change the Make, first of all, make sure the reveal works on your computer. And then if it does, just change this line 5 to PPTX, and we'll see if we can get a PowerPoint. Again, if anyone's... Uh, we do have a few people watching, but the last few weeks as we've been trying this, kind of embarrassing, I guess, doing it. At first, when I did it, it was kind of a sense of source of pride. It's a stupid source of pride, and it's mostly because I'm cheap, I think. Um, but I don't have any Microsoft products on this computer. I have access on a different computer, but so it's difficult for me to check the PowerPoint. Uh, and if this stuff that we're doing here looks computery, it's really not that bad. It's just the process that we use to share files with each other. And Casey, are you connected to this repo? No, I, I don't think so. Okay. It's, oh, so wait, I think, just, yeah, no, I saw the invite, but I don't know if I connected. I'll probably have to re-invite you if you're interested in it. Um, yeah. 
but Diego, I, I actually pushed that. So if you want to try to pull, I'm going to stop my screen share. If I can figure out. Okay, let me that. pull. I guess I can show. Let's see. Here's my. Well, no, I'm going to save my celebratory. Hopefully, this isn't what happens to us. Okay, let me render to PowerPoint and share screen. Well, I, yeah, so maybe. Oh, Ian's here. Let's get him on here. Oh, Ian made it. Hey, yes. Ian, hug on. It's good. The um, impressive use of the, uh, I guess, the kind of matrix. Was it that code line of the grid search thing? Yeah, that. so the grid extra facilitates that, cowplot facilitates that, lattice facilitates that. And then the one that I came across this week that I hadn't used before, but it looks like it might be helpful is ggpubr. And that mm -hmm. seems to be um, focused on getting ggplots in a format that things like journals might want, journals and books might want. The code isn't that intuitive. Like looking at it and like, I would not come to that conclusion just thinking that like three three and like the the one whatever stuff would come up as like the different grid stuff. Yeah. So actually, while while Diego uh, he doesn't have his presentation up yet, so let me maybe let me show mine. I'll show the other. Um, the other one I did, so I have it ready to actually take a look at. And you can tell me, Ian, and maybe you think that's a little more intuitive. So the ggpubr yeah. command is to have your, in this case, two different plots. <laughs> ggplots. So last week, Ian was about to get arrested. Diego's about to die in a fire. And then this week, it sounds like somebody just broke something. Hopefully not too soon. I just dropped my canteen. Uh, Your canteen? Well, I haven't. I didn't make it to the Boy Scouts. I was in, I think, the Cub Scouts, which is before Boy Scouts. But I don't think I've heard the word canteen. Um, hey, cool. Also, I'm going to head out right now. Okay. Thanks, Casey. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to be doing this every week, so hopefully you can make a couple. We'll do. Bye. Okay. Nice, nice seeing Bye. you, Casey. Bye. Um, nice, Casey. Ian. The uh, the gg pub the gg pub r specification for kind of some of the stuff we were doing is um, to say relatively how much wider you want one figure than another. So I don't know if that's more intuitive or not. But so the command here on line one sixteen is um, I want two columns that's specified here. That's fairly straightforward. But this is specific to columns, the width subcommand is specific to the column element, and it's saying make the first column twice as wide as the second. So it's kind of a relative thing. Ian, I don't know if that's... That makes a lot more sense. You think so? Well, I mean, it's because good that like, there's... Yeah, go ahead. Like when you think, I mean, this is just coming because, you know, I, I know the ggplot, the regular package, that, but because, like, when you go from, like, one step to the next, like the reason why the the grid other one doesn't make as much sense is because like how am I supposed to know that for the matrix like after that stuff it's supposed to do that? I mean now that I've seen it and like talking about, it, I understand, but like without you guys doing it, like I would have no idea like intuitively that you were supposed to go step by step to do column row and then. I think it's good there's so many options because people are just going to gravitate toward what they're more comfortable with and what's more intuitive for them. Oh, look, it works on PowerPoint. Hey, don't spoil it. Wait, you want to share your screen, Diego, and then I'll bring you on here? Yeah, that's it. Share screen. Yeah, share screen. Are you guys able to navigate the controls okay on the StreamYard stuff? It seems that seems pretty intuitive. Yeah, I think so. So Diego, maybe can you try it as a 
Can you try it as a reveal JS first? Oh, good. Yeah. Ian, so, do you have any plans for uh, the upcoming holiday break? Yes, I actually do. So I just finished packing pretty much today, um, and we're going to El Salvador for a week. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had not be been there before. No. I haven't been outside the country for like five years. Um, well, yeah, everyone's been kind of shut down. Are you, do you know any Spanish? Uh, my Espanol is pretty poor, so I'm just going to be like, listening and understanding like some words but otherwise i only know like the general terms and how to say like simple responses it sounds like a free ticket for diego for me i think you might need a translator yeah diego you yeah, can be uh, you can take me in your bag okay <laughs> um okay so we saw it there it worked in reveal right diego and then you said you changed it to pptx yeah, and this is what it gave me. Nice. So the one thing, I guess, the one thing that PowerPoint users may not like is I'm guessing that that entire block of plot is just one kind of blob of an image. If you click on that, is it one image or is it three? Probably. Okay. Oh, it's one. So you could probably take it and, you know, expand it like you normally would with a with a Windows object, but you can't really do much else with it. So that might be, you know, that might be something that <laughs> users. So that's how we ended up with the plot that looks like somebody vomited the day after Christmas Eve. Is there watching Diego go through um, all of the somersaults with that? But yeah, I think that's uh, that's time for celebration on that one. <laughs> How many, uh, how many gigs are you using to store all of these different files for your presentation? Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Only 15 That's child workers in Singapore have died because of it. Singapore yeah, I don't is know. one of the places I want to go to. Singapore? Just make sure you don't jaywalk. Uh, Cut your hand off. Jesus. Yeah, I heard that's pretty too. Yeah, it's supposed to have like a pretty nice ecosystem kind of culture thing going on. Oh, you're doing the vomit one again? Diego's he's a glutton for punishment. <laughs> oh, white. Yeah, white will be better. I think it was the gold that made it look pukey. Yeah. And it might be the fact that I just got over the flu, so. Um, uh, you know, I I had to get the boosters because I had a feeling that I was going around for the COVID and the flu. Yeah, uh, Diego and I were supposed to meet Tuesday, and Tuesday I kind of had the worst of it. I just couldn't really do much. Actually, yeah. that doesn't look bad, does it? So you've had it for three days? No, I'm f I I uh, you know puked Monday night and then. All day Tuesday, I was feeling nauseous, but just kind of achy. And then, okay. and then Wednesday, I took a COVID test just to make sure, and that was negative, and it started to feel fine. And now, I mean, I feel, you know, I feel fine now. So it was, I don't I know see. what it was. It just kind of ran through really quick. All right, cool. Well, that's all. That's all I wanted to get done today. I feel like we can close this issue in terms of trying to get the PowerPoint slides to show images in a format that we control, right? I mean, you could you could take that great extra, or if you want the ggpub or if you want to try a cowplot or lat, whatever you want to try as a package, 
me, that seems like a viable solution um, to get the images in a format that you want, in a location that you want, uh, without just bending to the restrictions of the two column format that, that they want you to use in terms of the Pandoc requirements for the PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, the you can you could also do this with like Plotly, right? Like GM, like the TG plot of Plotly, maybe. So you can have multiple Plotlys. Um, we can try it, but again, I think so. Casey was mentioning he got his client stakeholders to be okay with the HTML slide deck as opposed to the conventional, traditional PowerPoint. And to me, one of the strongest selling points on that is that the HTML um, enables that interactivity that we get in those Plotly objects, whereas PowerPoint by default doesn't. We'd have to try another hack. So we'd have to do kind of some of the same stuff we're doing here, which is the point of this whole live stream. That's fine. It's coming up with hacks to do you know, what you're not supposed to do. Um, I'm sure we could figure it out. We'd probably, you know, lose a lot there doing it. But but that one, I think, would be tricky, tricky. Getting I think that's important, it. though. Because, like, I think it's going to be important with HTML. It's for sure going to take over as the way that people learn. It just, we're not, I just feel like it's too difficult to set up. People don't know how to code in HTML. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the one of the things about using Quarto in our markdown is um, I've been learning more HTML just because uh, the overrides that we want to do to get the formats, the CSS that, that you create and use, and then also just kind of inspecting elements and seeing what they're called and how they're located and how they're nested and what's a parent, what's a child. Um, you know, this stuff has been helpful for that too, not just creating the documents and the, the papers and the presentations and the reports that we want, but also learning more about HTML. I'm, I'm finding, I think every week I'm finding myself, even on YouTube, when I look at my own tutorials and I'm trying to learn stuff, I'm not only just looking at Quarto stuff or Markdown stuff or R stuff, I'm actually looking more into CSS and HTML stuff. So I, I did a little, I did a little uh, YouTube tutorial the other day on, on VS Code. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of a cool little environment. It looks like they got some cool features. And that's just for, you know, scripting HTML. I've been using VS Code for Python. It's been great. What is VS Code? V VS, VS Code. It's from Microsoft. Oh. It's, it's just an editing environment. So It's kind of like, um, because the way they set it up, it's just like really interactive with GitHub. And then you can also install just like a ton of apps to like extensions that like work really well with the environment. Okay, guys. Well, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I think we're done this week. What's uh, the, I guess coming back, I'll have to take this call, but I guess um, what's, what's the next thing like for, for January? Well, either, I mean, we, there's plenty of, there's plenty of, oh my gosh, how do I do that kind of things that, that I encounter throughout the week. So I can come up with something or someone else has um, a question on how to do something when they're trying to produce a document through our markdown or through Quarto. If they reach out to one of us, I mean, leave a, if, if, you know, there's not that many people here in the chat right now, but if somebody watches this, after the live stream and they say, oh, I'd like to see these guys try to solve X. They could leave that in the comments to the video. And I think I get notified. <laughs> I don't know, because I've never gotten a comment, but I think I get notified if that happens. And so I'm hoping again, you know, this is going to be a slow build, but I'm hoping in maybe a couple of months or so that we don't have to provide the focal issue that we're trying to solve, but someone out there in the ether, someone in El Salvador or whatever can say, hey, how do I do this? And then we try to help them do that. I think I have a product idea if you guys uh -oh. are down. Yeah. Okay. So 
Dr. Pelos, you just keep on making me think like you're thinking about like this sort of HTML, like kind of university, power, not PowerPoint, but just like a slide deck where you can just like kind of learn the subject, like almost like in a tree format where you can like just kind of slide different type of lessons in and like see how that kind of branches out and then kind of is more interactive than just going horizontal. I mean, uh, vertically down, you have kind of like a horizontal and vertical movement with the HTML. Uh, yeah, so maybe draw it out and let's, let's, let's see if we can kind of pin that idea down a little bit. And also, think, uh, go ahead, Dio. later on January, I'll start doing all the analysis for my dissertation and I'm planning on doing it, um, like, um, using, uh, I'm using Papaja right now to create my the dissertation is for, except for the first two pages where I have to, uh, I did that manually on my, I sent you my dissertation, Dr. Kulas. And um, it's, uh, you know, that the first two pages are like the, yeah. um, the, uh, you know, blah, 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 Montclair right. done by okay. Diego Figueras to, for the Department of Psychology. I think so you that should part, change it to Diego Figgy. Just go with your YouTube name. Yeah. Right on your, right on your diploma. Diego Figgy, PhD. Getting figgy with it. <laughs> All close, like Diego Figgy, like in my email. But um, yeah, I was thinking, how in Papa Ja, is there any way to for me to automatically create those first pages? And then uh, the, the analysis, I'll also be using Python. But it would be nice that I I still use it on the on the same Papa Ja script. Um, yeah. Well, we don't. So, with Python. so you don't need to use Papa Ja either. So maybe that. Maybe the next couple of weeks we could talk about that. Is you know, many of these universities have their own LaTeX templates for dissertations and theses. Montclair doesn't yet, I don't believe, has a template like that. So the Papaja template we could take and just tweak it slightly, but we could also take a template from a different university whose graduate school uses that for theses and dissertations. And we can actually alter that, make it fit for the requirements of Montclair. So yeah, I, that's, yeah. so I'd be up for that. I mean, if you want to do that, it's kind of, kind of one of these sessions, we, we could try to do that. I'm done to do that. Also, right now, I'm learning uh, SQL, so primarily um, doing that, and so I probably wouldn't be able to learn HTML at the moment. Um, but I'm down to still observe Diego's dissertation and stuff. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, let's keep kicking around ideas. We'll come up with a focal topic um, by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, because that's when I've been kind of putting out notice of what we're doing and trying to get an upline together. Um, so, you know, I think for the first couple sessions, if we keep it small, something like this, how do I get figures into a PowerPoint slide? Um, that's probably better than a grander. Um, and also, being able to implement Python, I think that that would attract a lot of people because a lot of people in data science, they use Python. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. And so the other thing I was going to say, Diego, for your, for your dissertation is um, you can use Quarto. You don't need to use uh, you don't need to use Papaja. We should be able to get a template in there in Quarto that you can yeah. actually. Or I can like create a, can use... a, Quarto, a Quarto script and then feed that to the to the Papaja script, um, you know. Yeah, you could, prob script. you could probably do that, but but the other, if, if you're doing a Quarto, it might, it might actually communicate a little better with Python. You were even mentioning that before, right? So instead of reticulate and all of the dependencies that you need within the old R markdown, it seems to be a little more, it seems to be a little easier. It seems to be a little more integrated now, right? Within a Quarto document to go yeah. from R to Python to R to Python. Yeah, you can just copy paste the Python code as you have it in Jupyter Notebook. And it'll, you know, it'll load all the packages, all the modules and everything. Uh, okay. Well, let's talk back channel and see what we want to do next week. I'm considering this issue closed for now until someone reaches out and say, says, um, hey, I want to extend that a little bit or do this. That's a little bit different. So you guys have a good holiday here. 
uh, I'm Christian, so I'll say Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year, all that good stuff. Um, happy I guess, Christmas. yeah, Happy Christmas. Hopefully, I'll see you before the New Year. But uh, you guys have a good weekend. Okay. Thanks. You guys too. See you Bye. guys later. Bye.